Gun, hey, hey, Shalom. Shalom. All right, first and foremost, we're going to give all praises on the glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakat Badash, Devon City Apostles, Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elected nation of Israel, all right? My name is Aratiza. Brother Kashkwala. All right, we're from the Great Millstone uh, GMS Atlanta camp, all right, with another um, video. Basically, this uh, video <clears throat> is going to be based on um, Second Ezra's the, uh, 12th chapter, all right, dealing with the uh, 12 feathers uh, well, vision that Ezra's received, which we did a, um, a overview or video on it um, on chapter 11, maybe about what, five, four or five months ago, maybe maybe six months ago. All right, Spirit's got us to, you know, we might as well just cover chapter 12 as well, which is pretty much a, <clears throat> like a recap. You know, the angel's pretty much uh, expounding on what he was bringing out to him in, um, uh, in chapter 11, right? He's basically explaining it, all right? So without further ado, we're just going to, you know, get right into it. Okay. <clears throat> this is Second Ezra chapter 12, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass, whilst the lion spake these words unto the eagle, I saw, and behold, the head that remained, and the four wings appeared no more, and the two went unto it. And mm -hmm. set themselves up to reign, and their kingdom was small and full of uproar. Right. So you, you read chapter eleven, which you know that video is still up. I think the um the brothers from Dallas they they did a video as well. They did a class on it, um, second of chapter eleven. When you go through it, the feathers represent these uh, particular Caesars. Right. All right. Start from uh, which you know brothers got the names. I can read them all. Go ahead. Uh, the feathers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I'll just read the season. Mm -hmm. We'll start with uh, Augustus, Tiberius, uh, Calig Caligula, uh, Claudius, Nero, Galba, Otho, Vitilius, Vespasian, <clears throat> Titus, and Domitian. Right. He started with Augustus. It's really the first was um, Julius. Julius Caesar. But the scholars scholars don't consider him as a um, as a Caesar. They say he was like more of a uh, Dictator, so to speak, but well, he was the first. He was the first Caesar, all right. So that's the what basically what the prophecy is dealing with. Right. That time frame, you know, in, in so-called Roman history, those those first twelve Caesars to rule, all right. Mm -hmm. So you go ahead. Uh, verse three it says, "I saw, that's so like and mm -hmm. I saw, and behold, they appeared no more, and the whole body of the eagle was burnt, so that the earth was in great fear. Then awake." I out of the trouble and trance of my mind and from great fear and said unto my spirit, Lo, verse 4, Lo, mm -hmm. this has thou done unto me and that thou searchest out the ways of the highest. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, Lo, yet am I weary in mind and very weak in my spirit and little strength is there in me. For the great fear with, uh, wherewith I was affrighted this night, mm -hmm. verse six. Therefore, will I now beseech the highest that he will comfort me unto the end. Right. So he's seen his vision. He's seen, you know, and hey, it's, it tells you that that was um. You, you jump back to chapter eleven. It says that was uh, especially the the latter part of the feathers, which essentially was the the Flavian dynasty. Mm -hmm. That was a very that was a very uh, restrictive time for our people. Right. All right. Flavian dynasty. You know, Vespasian. Uh, uh, Titus and Domitian, they put they put hell on our people, man. All right. So in in um, Ezra's uh, seen that, you know. Go ahead. Uh, just going back to the Second Ezra's eleven, just a little mm -hmm. bit. This is Second Ezra's eleven chapter. Uh, it's like Second Ezra's eleven verse thirty two. It says, um, and this is what the elder was speaking about. It says, but this head put the whole earth to fear and bear rule. In it over all those that dwelt upon the earth uh, with much oppression, and it had the governance of the world more than all the wings that had been. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yep. that's the reincarnation yeah. of Ju Julius, which was a uh, that was a uh, not the Michigan Vespasian. Vespasian, right? Right. So, mm -hmm. like the elder was saying, that was that was a bad time for for Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. 
Okay. Uh, verse 6 again, mm -hmm. uh, Second Exodus 12 and 6, it says, Therefore will I now beseech the highest that he will comfort me unto the end. Verse 7, And I said, Lord, that bearest rule, if I found grace before thy sight, and if I am justified with thee before many others, and if my prayer indeed be come up before thy face, comfort me then. Verse 8, comfort me then, and show me thy servant the interpretation and plain difference of this fearful vision that thou mayest per perfectly comfort my soul. Right. As I just said, when you read on, which I think it's chapter eight, it's chapter 15 and 16, we said, woe is, woe is me, woe is me, who would deliver me in those days? I mean, Ezra, he got some heavy um, visions, man. Visions of the end times. All right. He's seen all the destruction. Most high was basically showing him, like, look, this was going to happen. Like, damn. You know? Mm -hmm. and so, which is how he knew he, he understood reincarnation. Because why, why else would he say, who, who's going to deliver me in those days? If this is going to happen thousands of years in the future. Right. You know? I mean, you, you, you grab something. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. Uh, just for, because he mentioned, Ezra's missing, mentioned the word comfort a few times. Mm-hmm. This is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and 3. It says, Blessed be the Most High, even the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the Father of mercies, and the, and the power of all comfort. Mm -hmm. Verse mm -hmm. 4 says, Whom comforteth us in all our tribulation. Mm -hmm. And hey, as you're seeing this, this vision, it was troubling to him. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. It says uh, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Uh, by the comfort with we ourselves are comforted from the Most High. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, so I, I comfort come from uh, from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. You know, all our temptations, our, our you know low points, you know those, those shaky moments, so to speak. If we gotta go to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you know, just, right. just as he did right here. Right. This is Second uh, Ezra chapter twelve, verse nine. It says, "For thou hast judged me worthy to show me." The last times. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, go ahead. It says, um, verse 10, it says, And he said unto me, This is the interpretation of the vision. Verse 11, The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the, king, is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. Right, which is the Roman Empire. Right. Which is particularly dealing with that, uh, that first uh, portion of it, those first 12 Caesars. Mm -hmm. All right, but it's talking about the Roman Empire. All right, All right. go ahead. And it mentioned Daniel. Right. Uh, just a, that shows the validity of the Apocrypha. That's right, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. That's right. <clears throat> Verse 12, yep. it says, uh, But it was not expounded unto him, therefore now I declare it unto thee. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, Behold, the days will come that there shall rise up a kingdom upon the earth. And it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. In the same uh, shall 12 kings reign, one after another. Right, so this is where he's, he's basically breaking it down to him. What the 12 feathers represent, 12 kings. Essentially, as we read earlier, it was, it was the 12 Caesars, all right? Start from Julius Caesar all the way to uh, uh, Titus, I believe, was, was the last one. Uh, yeah, Domitian. Domitian, Slaki. Titus was came before, all right? Go ahead. It says, verse 15, it says, Wherefore the second shall begin to reign and shall have more time than any of the twelve. Right, and that was Augustus Caesar, which he ruled roughly by, what, 40-something 40, 40 years? Yeah. Something like that mm -hmm. in that area. You know, some scholars say 40 or 45, close to 50. You know, they mm -hmm. throw numbers around. But if you look at the timeline, that's pinpoint accuracy, man. Right. You know, he ruled longer than all of them. All right? Right. Go ahead. Verse 16, and this do the twelve wings signify which thou sawest. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. Which the, which the wings is basically the, the, um, the same thing. Twelve wings, twelve, twelve feathers. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 17. As for the voice which thou heardest, uh, heardest speak, and that thou sawest not go out from the heads, but from the midst of the body thereof, this is the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, that after the time of the kingdom, there shall rise, so like it, there shall arise great strivings, and it shall stand in peril of falling. Nevertheless, it shall not uh, then fall, but shall be restored again to its beginning. Right. 
which we uh, we brought out in the last in the chapter eleven when it spoke about the about the body that's dealing with the um dealing with the Senate, all right? Because the because the, the Senate is it was in control just like today you got the um you got the, like the uh, electoral college right. they basically decide who the who the president's going to be, you know? Mm -hmm. So the back in Rome the Roman Senate they was basically in control of of who was going to rule next. Right. So all these Caesars were getting set up. They was basically set up by the best Senate. Right. It, you know? Yeah, it's, that's spot on. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly what they did yesterday. Oh, yeah, damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. exactly yep. Uh, their, the Senate. That's it. You know, and they had the Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, mm -hmm. and then the Vice President. Damn, I, I didn't even think of it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly what happened, what we're reading here, happened yesterday. And uh, they counted up all the electoral votes, and they deemed Joe Biden the next president, and mm -hmm. Kamala Harris the next vice president. That's right. Same, same exact same, thing. Same, same exact thing. Yep. Um, no new thing under the sun. No new thing under the sun. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna reread verse eighteen. Uh, verse eighteen. Yep. That after the time of the kingdom there shall arise great strivings, and it shall stand in peril of falling. Nevertheless, it shall not then fall, but shall be restored again to his beginning. Right, which that's, which that's heavy too, because you had that period of time, you know, in that timeline, dealing with the, 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 uh, the year, the year, the four emperors. Right. That was, that was a, uh, that was a, that was a shaky time for the Roman Empire. Oh, yeah. But then, which is, which is heavy, because it said it would be restored again to his beginning. So who, who came back at the end of that, Vespasian? Which really was Julius, Julius Caesar, Caesar in the reincarnation. So right there, it's telling you, you see what I'm saying? It was right. restored back to the beginning. That the first, the first triumphant came back, right. so to speak. You know, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Just, so. just a quick precept, just to apply. Right, kind right. Of what's going? <clears throat> just to apply. It's not a you know mm -hmm. a direct precept. You got it. You got it, bro. Brothers will understand it. You got it. Jeremiah chapter fifty one and eight. It says Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain? Mm -hmm. If so, she may be healed. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to bring that out because right, this right. is a form of like uh, healing. Like the elder was saying, mm -hmm. the year of the four emperors, man, it looked shaky for Rome. Yeah, it looked real shaky mm -hmm. until Vespasian, you know, brought back back a certain type of power mm -hmm. to Rome. Mm -hmm. you know, that's right. He that's was right. like the bomb that healed those that womb over those mm -hmm. four years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. All yeah. right. Uh, verse nineteen. Verse nineteen. Yep. Yeah. All right. Second Ezra chapter twelve, verse nineteen. Shall I want to the brothers on the comment board too? Shall I want? Shall I want? See y'all on there. All right. Go ahead. Kind of. verse nineteen. It says, "And whereas thou sawest the eight small under under feathers <clears throat> sticking to her wings, this is the interpretation." Verse twenty. That in him there shall arise eight kings, whose time shall be but small, and their years swift. Right. So you had particular Caesars that didn't rule as long <clears throat> as some of the others. All right. They made it rule for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. You know, and again, you go back to, you know, uh, chapter 11, it, it, you know, it was, it was breaking it down. Mm -hmm. You had some that was getting basically knocked off in uh, four months. Right. Then the next guy come, he'll get knocked off in in in, in six months, you know. This right. dude, this dude, roof for seven days, right? And, get jugged, <laughs> and you know he, he kill himself or whatever. That was what's going on, man. Roman, it was it was, it was crazy, man. Right. You know, just Google uh, a year year of the four emperors, all right. Which we got the names too, if you want to read those. Um, I think it starts with uh, uh year of the four emperors right. was uh, Galba, Otho. Vitilius and Vespasian. Right. Vespasian was the ending of it. Right. Yeah, so that's that's four of the eight that's talking about. All right? The time was swift. Even Vespasian, Vespasian didn't even rule that. Even though he had a major he was he was a major force, but he wasn't in in the in the power seat that, that long. Yeah, like compared to the other compared ones. Compared to the other ones, right. Yeah, like Augustus, like you said, was like forty, scholars say forty four, right, right, right. Then Tiberius was twenty two years. Mm -hmm. So on, most of them were between like that 15, 20 year mark. This page only ruled for like nine years. That's right. That's right. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, you, you got something else? Uh, right. Okay, you got it. Uh, let's see. He was at verse, verse uh, 
that verse? Twenty, yeah, twenty. Yep. Uh, Second Ezra chapter twelve and twenty it says that in him there shall arise eight kings whose time shall be but small, and their in their years swift. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty one, and two of them shall perish, the middle time approaching. Mm -hmm. Four shall be kept until their end begin to approach. Two shall uh, be kept until the end. Right. <clears throat> so it's, it's 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 describing that that time that time period. All right, of uh, the timeline of these particular eight seeds that only rule for a short time. He said two of them shall perish. He said what uh, the four shall uh, continue to the end. It says four shall be kept until their end right. begin to approach. Right. It says but two shall be kept until the end. Two two shall be kept until the end, which those which when you read down, is going to tell you those those last two is talking about uh, Titus and Domitian. All right, when you read because it's going to connect it. All right. But you, you can go ahead. It says, verse 22, it says, And whereas thou sawest three heads resting, this is the interpretation. Right. Verse 23, And in his last days shall the Most High arise, uh, Shalakia, In the last days shall the Most High raise up three kingdoms and renew many things therein. And they uh, shall have the dominion over the earth. Right. This the earth. Right. This is talking about the Flavian dynasty. Even though it says three kingdoms, really that's talking about, you know, Vespasian's his rule, that's his kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, Titus, he ruled, that's his kingdom. And then you had the, uh, Domitian, which was, I believe, was the, the uh, younger brother. All right? And when it says they had rule over the earth, meaning the known world at that time. Because right. the they didn't know about, they didn't rule like how, how Esau's ruling now. Where they, got, they got the fatness of the earth. Right. You know, that hair. Right. Or yellow hair. Look it up in the matter of fact, edification. Look it up in the etymology. Okay. I read that. I was like, "Come on, man." The wrong man. Y'all the Edomites, man. Right. Ain't no way. Ain't no way you gonna you gonna convince us otherwise, bro. You are the Edomites. You know. Of, uh, I clicked on Flavian. Yep. And then I clicked on the root Flavius. Yep. It says. Um, <laughs> A Roman uh, gene's name right. related to uh, Flavus. Fla right. Golden, yellow, blonde. <laughs> it says yellow haired. Yellow, yellow haired, man. That's it. Which goes back to leprosy. Right. When you read the law, man, we said well, uh, when you see a man with uh, yellow, thin hair, mm -hmm. you know, with the, you know what I'm saying? That's leprosy, man. So that's talking about you so called white people. This is really, this is really your, your, your uh, history. That's it, yep. yep you know? For sure. You damn devils, man. All right. 100%. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you, you got, yeah, anything uh, else, right? We, you said verse 20, 23, right? 23. Okay. Go ahead. It says, uh, verse 23, in the last days shall the Most High raise up three kingdoms and renew many things uh, therein, and they shall have the dominion of the earth. Right. Was this the um, the, fir the first triumphant? You read, read up on that. Was it Julius Caesar? Uh, Crassus, I think one of the name was, Pompeii. and Pompey, mm -hmm. they all they all ruled together. That's why I was a triumphant. They had a joint rulership. But then when you read the prophecy, going back to see, it goes hand in hand. Second, there's eleven and twelve. The eleventh chapter says that the that the heads were at rest, right? You know, yeah, see. and then they came back. So they, they came back in the form of the the Flavian dynasty. They was they was alive at the time all together, but they ruled at separate times. You see what I'm saying? Yep. In Second Ezra 11 and 9, it says, But let the heads be preserved for the last. Right. The head prefer, yeah, so mm -hmm. they, was a, they was the last uh, Caesars to, to reign in this prophecy, during, you know, dealing with the feathers. All right? It was the last three, you know? The Lord always deals with a full circumference of things. That's right. That's right. Yeah. just, you know, ended the circle right there. That's right. Yeah, that's with right. The last three heads, mm. they just came right back around. Um, <clears throat> verse 24 It says And of those that dwelt therein With, uh, with <clears throat> much oppression mm -hmm. Above all those That were before them right. Therefore are they called the heads of the eagle Yep Verse 25 it says For these are they that shall accom accomplish His wickedness mm -hmm. And that shall finish his last end mm -hmm. But Esau went out with a bang Yeah that's it you know, you can you can tie this to today, man. You saw going out with a bang. Yeah, you tie it to the yeah. Yep, yep. You know? Yep. Because what you got uh 
just you know just mm. hypothetically you right, right, right. facetious a little right. bit. You had Obama, and then now then you had Trump. Now you're gonna have Biden. You know them three are gonna bring you home. Cause at the end of the day, when 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 Obama came in, he didn't <coughs> do nothing for you. You <coughs> crushed the niggas, man. <laughs> right. He didn't do nothing for you. He just wore a whole bunch of executive orders that just gave an alley oop to Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Donald Trump came in. Look at twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? In his four years, he spent over what six, seven, like billion dollars. Mm-hmm. I think he's the second. Uh, uh, Obama was the first highest spending president. Trump was the second highest spending president in history. All right, now you got this dude Biden. Mm-hmm. Well, matter of fact, I had, you know put that in the group te- text. Yeah, just seen, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. It yep. says uh, Biden wants to release nearly all available vaccines. Mm. So these mm. devils are going out with a bang right now, just like they did back in Rome. Yep. You know? I got a precept. This one came to mind as you as you were saying that Revelation twelve and twelve. Right. Uh, That's the, straight out right Oh yeah. This, yep. This is uh. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath mm-hmm. because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Yeah. And if I may say, yeah, because yeah, got it. The, yeah. the devil knows that he has, you know, which we know that's the Edomites. He knows he has a short time, but Esau has always had a hasty spirit on him mm-hmm. and, uh, from the jump. Yep. Going all the way back to the book of Genesis. That's right. You hurry, I'm about to die. Mm-hmm. Being a little punk, like, bro, you can't wait about 10 more minutes till this is done. No, he's hasty. He doesn't, mm-hmm. he moves, he moves every, he, that's why we can see how sloppy he is now. Right. Because he does everything in haste and he's trying to be quick with it. Mm-hmm. Because he knows, but he has a short time. Right. You know? And, you know, we say that, you know, Esau Edom is the harbinger of death. Mm-hmm. And, like, the, the, uh, the brother Abu and I can't say, he said basically, which is, I was like, damn, that's a good point. He said, this is basically death, death's last hoorah, so oh, to speak. Yeah, that's right, yep. You know, because in the kingdom, you know, we're not going to die. We're going we're gonna to be like basically gods, man. Right. So this is this is uh, death's last chance to, you know, do his thing, so to speak, man. Right. So, so when death comes this time, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come, like, like you said, man. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to it's uh, basically Esau is going out with a bang, man. Right. You know? But yeah, that was it on that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so going back. I'm going to reread verse 24. Mm-hmm. It says, uh, 2 Ezra 12 and 24, and, and of those that dwell therein with much oppression above all those that were before them, therefore they are called the heads of the eagle. Verse 25, these are they that shall accomplish his wickedness and shall finish uh, his last end. Mm-hmm. Verse 26, and whereas thou sawest the great head appear no more, it signifies that one of them shall die upon his bed Mm-hmm. And yet with pain, verse twenty-seven. Right, the great, right, the great head. That's that's va- Vespasian. Mm-hmm. All right, he was the um, basically he was the main one. Just, mm-hmm. just, just basically it's like this three, three-headed eagle, so to speak. Mm-hmm. All right, he was in the middle. All right, so once, once he died, that left his two sons. All right, right. go ahead. Verse twenty-seven. For the two that remained shall be slain with the sword. Mm-hmm. It says verse twenty-eight. For the sword of the one shall devour the other, mm-hmm. but at the last shall he fall through uh, the sword himself. Right. Verse. Okay. Verse twenty nine. Mm-hmm. It says in oh, where. Yeah, matter of fact, go back read verse. Um, twenty eight. Again. Yeah, read twenty eight again. Cause that comes slightly. Verse twenty eight. It says, "For the sword of the one shall devour the other." Right. So for for the sword of one shall devour the other. And when you research it, all right, because uh, it's it's like a it's like a. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a so-called conspiracy. When you read the history on it, they believe that Domitian had uh, Titus killed. Mm-hmm. All right, his own brother, man, because he believe. I think um, we read the history on it. I was, I was reading it earlier today. Basically, um, Vespasian, because you know they they deal with you know your sons, you know the oldest sons are gonna be next. So Vespasian, he was basically grooming. You know Titus to be the you know his his uh his heir so to speak to the throne, mm-hmm. and when you read up on it, uh uh the younger brother who's Domitian he was kind of looking at that like, damn you know what I'm saying like why, you know why fuck he getting you know it's in the history, right. so they they speculate that uh Domitian had Titus killed so that's why it says verse twenty eight again it says for the sword of 
the one shall devour the other, man. All right? So they started, they, they came against each other. Right. You know? That's it. Let me turn off the, uh, no, sir. All right, you got it. <clears throat> it says, um, <clears throat> verse 29, and whereas thou sawest two feathers under the wings passing over the head that is on the right side, mm -hmm. verse 30, it signified that these are they whom the highest hath kept unto their end. This is the small kingdom and full of trouble, as thou sawest. Right, so remember we read when it said, um, two shall perish, four shall be kept to end, two mm -hmm. shall be kept. So it's, it's, it's linking back up. Right. Then you notice it's the, the, end, the end of that, uh, of that particular rule, that reign, the, the, the end of the um, Flavian so dynasty. dynasty right? All right, go ahead. It says verse 31, in the lion whom thou sawest raising up out of the wood and roaring and speaking in, uh, speaking to the eagle right, and rebuking her for her unrighteousness with all the words which thou hast heard. Mm -hmm. This is the anointing which the highest hath kept from uh, for them and for their wickedness unto the end. Right, which the anointed, which we all know, is talking about Yahweh Shai. All right, that lion, man. Right. All right, that's the, that's the anointed. Go ahead. It says, and he shall reprove them and shall upbraid them with their cruelty. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 33, it says, for he shall set them before him alive in judgment and shall rebuke them and correct them. Right. Verse 34, for the rest of my people shall he deliver with mercy mm -hmm. those that have been preserved upon my borders and he shall make them joyful unto the coming of the day of judgment mm -hmm. whereof I have spoken unto thee from the beginning from the beginning so that's what Yahweh Shah is coming to do man right. he's coming to preserve and, and uh, save our people because this same these same individuals they, they're back again today they're doing, the doing the same thing like we read uh you know, uh, what, 70 AD was, was that, was the Jeremiah 30 and 7 at that time. All right. And then that's coming back again, Jeremiah 30 and 7. We say it's, it's going to be 70, 70 AD 2.0. Right. All right. And Yahweh Shah going to be there. All right. To, uh, it said what? He said he's going he's gonna to save. Um, what verse that you just read? Uh, was a verse word. 34. Verse, um, can, 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 can I read on verse 34 again? Verse 34 says, For the rest of my people shall be delivered with mercy, those that have been preserved upon my borders, and he shall make them joyful unto the coming of the day of, the, of judgment, wherefore I have spoken unto thee from the beginning. Right, those that have, those that have been preserved. Sure. Who's that? That's the, that's, the, that's the remnant. That's right. <laughs> all right, that's the remnant, man. And, and even, even, back, even back then, all right, some of the remnant got away. That's why the scripture say, that's why he told them, look, we see um, uh, Jerusalem, could pass by with armies flee to the mountains. Mm -hmm. So even the even the remnant back then uh, escape. Right, they flee, man. Cause they what? They they took heed to the to the words of the Lord, man. So it's the same thing now. Alright, we 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 uh you know seeing Jerusalem, so to speak, pass by with armies, but we're fleeing uh you know spiritually so to speak. Right. You know, let's we'll say flee out of the midst of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Every man deliver his own soul, so to speak. Alright. Yeah, yeah, preset. Um, I was just gonna try to find what you were saying. Okay, yeah. So that 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 remnant man, Yahweh Shah is coming to redeem and preserve that remnant. And it says what they going um. For thirty four again it says what it shall make them joyful unto the the coming of the day of judgment. All right, <laughs> which is it's not you know it's no coincidence. This is this is the year hastening the um day of the Lord man. Right. Which essentially is the is, is the day of judgment. All right. Uh, this is, yes, sir. This is Mark chapter thirteen and fourteen. Mm -hmm. It says, "But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel." Mm -hmm. yeah, Daniel, yeah, yeah, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you know this is like, like the elder was saying that that was Jacob's trouble during that time. That's right. It's gonna be Jacob's trouble two point mm -hmm. or should I say Jacob's trouble twenty twenty one? More willing. <laughs> That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Coming now, yeah. you know. It says, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, says, uh, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee unto the mountains. And it's the spirit why it says, let him that readeth understand. Then say, then let them mm -hmm. that be in Judea flee unto the mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, flee to the mountains because... <clears throat> 
this is something that you got to understand that troubling times are coming. That's right. That's right. And, you know, like the elder is saying, we're not, you know, hey, you should. We, some of us may actually flee to some mountainous areas, but right, right, right. just in a sense, uh, we're going to flee into that tower mm-hmm. that the scripts speak about, the classic script 18 and that's 10. That's it, that's uh, it. Proverbs 18 and 10. That's what we're going to flee into. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's right. And that's what he's telling us right here. That's right. All right. And not a lot of people understand. <laughs> that's that's right. Not a lot of people want to read it either. Mm-hmm. It says, let him that read it understand it. Comprehend the words that um, the Lord is saying. And like like uh, El- the elder is saying, th- in 70 AD, there were some that fled. When you read um, Babylon and Timbuktu, mm-hmm. that book, it talks yeah. about like over a million well, yep. fled into um, uh, into it, Egypt. Africa, yeah. Into to, Africa. To Africa, yeah. That's yep. it. You know, that, was, it. that was what he was saying right there. Mm-hmm. All right. And you're going to have some people doing it in this time because the sheep hear his voice. That's right. You know? That's right. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's on point right there. To go back to 2 Samuel 12, I'm reading verse 34 again. Yep. It says, uh, For the rest of my people shall he deliver with mercy those that have been preserved upon my borders, and he shall make them joyful unto the coming of the day of judgment, whereof I have spoken unto thee from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Verse 35, this is the dream that thou sawest, and these are the interpretations. Right. So that, that pretty much, um, let's see, yeah, that, that, pretty, that pretty much ends it right there. And then it goes on, I mean, the whole, the whole chapter is, 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 is beautiful. Hey, but, read, yeah. Read 46 and 47. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, God, yeah. Well, you know, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. And just through the Spirit, yeah. you know, 2nd um, mm-hmm. Ezra chapter 12, verse 46 says, be of good comfort, O Israel, and be not heavy, thy house of Jacob. Verse 47, for the highest hath, <clears throat> hath you in remembrance, and the mighty have not forgotten you in temptation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. So the Most High is always going to be with his people, starting with the elect. Mm-hmm. All right? So we don't have nothing to uh, fear. Right. Just put our trust and in, in hope in your house by Yahweh Shah. He's going to be with us, man. He's going to deliver us. You know? He did it back then, right? Mm-hmm. You know, what comes to mind is, uh, was that, uh, Sirach chapter 2? Oh, yeah. You know, see, any trust in the Lord, you won't yeah, get I it, do. you know? <clears throat> That's it, man. Just, just put it, put our trust, hoping your Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, he won't save us out of these different scenarios, man. You know, just like he did back then during the time of these different wars and, and uprisings we're reading about, and in, especially in this time, in the times of the end, all right? Right. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus of Sirach, chapter 2 and 10. Mm-hmm. It says, look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon? Mm-hmm. It says right. for the... Uh, so like, yeah, no, nah, and, and, and the answer to that is nobody. Right. All right, whoever, who, who has he despised that called upon him? Nobody, man. Mm-hmm. All right? You call upon the Lord in sincerity and truth. All right, the Lord, the Lord will come through for you, man. Right. All right. Most high sin the Savior, you know, was that's Yahweh Shah, which that's what his name means. He he saves or, or he he delivers. All right. Mm-hmm. So it says what? Be a be a good comfort. It says uh it says um and, what uh and be not heavy, meaning what? Be be not heavy minded, man. Don't don't let don't let the thoughts, you know, the what ifs, you know, weigh you down, so to speak, man. You know, and just go with just pure raw faith. You know, just that raw faith. Yeah, how about you, my shot going to be there for us, man? You know, you know, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yes, son. All right. <clears throat> so, you know, with that, you know, this is, a, um, you know, uh, uh, over overview or review of uh, Second Ezra's uh, chapter 12. All right, like I said, we did Second Ezra 11 <clears throat> a few months back. You might want to search on YouTube if you want to watch that. A few other brothers done uh, videos on it as well. All right, but we just wanted to come through in the spirit, you know, and do this uh, video. All right, so we're going we gonna to sign off, giving them praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Makapadash, the Bonds to the Apostles, that was a great millstone. All right, and uh, Shalom to the elect, Lord willing to the next uh, video, Shalom. Shalom.